Hello, my art friends. It is time for our sketch box unboxing. This is going to be the June box. I wanted to show everyone the wonderful artwork by Jennifer Lee on the front of the box. Let's not waste time and let's break this right open. All right here is the card for this month by Sophie Paradis, I'm guessing is how you pronounce that, not sure. Very nice. Now I will be reading off this card to let you know what the prices of these materials are. I did get a sneak peek of what this was. It's a very interesting month, by the way. So these are the Custom Hero Arts Reactive Ink. So that's, uh, that's interesting in itself. Let's see, what colors do we have here? We have Blue Raspberry, Lemon Drop, Fruit Punch, and Fog. The fog just looks like a gray. I thought it was silver. Um, the fruit punch looks very orange to me. I was assuming it was pink, but it looks very orange. Maybe we have to shake it up. I think she shouldn't have to shake up, but we'll see. Um, so these are what they say they are in the box. They are reactive inks. So I like to work with ink. However, I think the reason I like to work with ink so much is because once it's dry, you cannot rework it and you can layer it and do all kinds of things. So inks that are able to reactivate like a watercolor is a little perplexing to me. And we're gonna be trying these out. I'm very curious what these are all about. I really am. Okay, so this little pack here is $23.96. This month we also get a pink Copic multi-liner. Um, I like to get different colors other than just our normal black. I'm probably gonna take this to work. But the pink color is nice. We have a Sketchbox Signature white gel pen. Oh, sorry, this is $3.99, this is $3.59. We also get a King Art Size 4 round brush, retail price is $9.99. And then we get some print making and drawing 100% cotton. So we get some, it, these are postcard size. Okay, so these are made, this is a nice smooth textured paper. I'm sure it's going to work wonderfully with our inks. Right, first things thir first, let's go ahead and start swatching these and see exactly what this reactive ink business is all about. I did some swatches. They're interesting, to say the least. Um, the teal color, or whatever, blue raspberry. Okay, so I did my first layer and let it completely dry for a couple of hours and came back and then did my second pass. This bled really bad, and the paper was not wet. I didn't wet the paper or anything, but the blue really bled out into the other colors. That's something to note. Um, it does reactivate. Um, as you can see here, I used just clean water and tried to blend it together, and it does reactivate. I don't think it layers very nice on top of each other. And when I say that, it's like, yes, it does layer. And it doesn't get, like, overly muddy. It's just these aren't very opaque. I guess when I use, like, ink tents and stuff that you can actually layer and see the color on top of another color, and that's not what's happening here. Um, it, a little bit, yes. Obviously, you can see some greens and stuff. I, I just, being an ink, I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, other than that, the gel pen looks okay. It doesn't really show up as 
white over the ink. Um, pink Copic marker is pretty good. I'm just not sure if this paper is one to, I mean, maybe it bled because of the paper. I don't know. Um, I'm going to do something else with these. I wish this, this was just my little test to see what, what they were like. So far, I think they're a little strange, but um, maybe we just won't pl apply so much to the paper and it won't buckle or anything. So, uh, yeah. All right. I tested them out here. So let me do an actual art piece with these. Oh, one other thing to note. I don't know if you, um, so this is dry, but if you rub your hand across it, it comes off on, on you. So yeah, that was, that was weird. Um, it, even being dry, it's kind of rubbing off on me. Before I go on, I want to talk about something. Um, so when I did these little uh, swatches, remember I said, wow, they really bleed. As you can see, it, it was kind of strange how easy this bled and things were dry when I added my second colors. thought it was weird. However, as weird as that is, it's really, it did some really neat things. So let me get this close. And I hope you can see it. Mm, well, it's not quite as obvious as it is in real life. But we have bleeding on the edges. But here, the bleeding is like a teal color. Looks really neat. Up over here, you can see the green. It's like outlined in green. It's a really neat effect that it's super cool. You can't see it as well as I can, but that was a nice little surprise. And it's good to know that these reactive inks can do that. Now you're not gonna want that effect all the time. However, in these little abstracty things, I was gonna make trees or flowers or something. This was just like my first layer. That's really cool looking and I'm quite, enjoying the weird bleeding that, that, it, that I'm getting from it. So I just wanted to point that out. Yes, these colors bleed and do some strange things, but at the same time, they're creating some really neat effects. Lesson learned. This is why you don't judge your materials before you give them a complete test run. If you would ask me if these were going to work out in any way, shape, or form, just by the way they performed on this piece of paper and how much they bled and did really strange things, I would have told you that this isn't going to work out well. This was really fun. I made pretty much nothing. It's just I was started doodling and just playing, and it turned into like a little forest scene. Um, I had a, I had fun with this. The fact that they don't behave the way you would think made it fun to play with. 
I even used this pink to add some interest and the white. It's not your most pigmented white. I added it to make some variations and some distance highlights. You can actually layer this up a little bit, but it's still not going to be white, white. I thought these were interesting. Will I use them again? I think I will. If I see them, I might pick up a couple different colors. But some of the interesting things it did when I was doing this abstract play time, really, um, I really liked it. Now, are these going to perform well if you're doing a realistic picture? I don't know. I don't know if it's the paper that made it bleed. Beats me. I'm going to play with these a little more. But the effects I got... I'm going to remember how I did it, and I'm going to try to recreate it again because it was really cool. I can see doing a really neat fall background with oranges and reds and burgundies and all that good stuff. I think it would make a really interesting fall foliage picture. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Do all the good things. Comment down below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.